I hope it's focused. Cool. So, I... Wow, look at that, we clapped at the same time. Did we? Yeah. Oh. I'm a lawyer, and I play softball. I'm basically the total package. You're not a lawyer yet. And I don't play softball, but here we are. <laughs> Hello, I'm Samantha. And I'm Gray. We, we are, are engaged. engaged. <laughs> Samantha and I have been dating for a little over two years now, as of November. A little? A lot over two years now. <laughs> it was still a it lot. It was still a lot then. over two years then. <laughs> but on our two year anniversary, <laughs> not on our two year anniversary, just sometime around the time we've been dating for two years, we had both been- <laughs> On our two year. <laughs> On our two year anniversary, we both decided we want to get married and didn't say. <laughs> our two year dating anniversary was actually on the same day as my last day of radiation. And I didn't want to think about marriage or anything until after I was done with cancer treatment. So I think once I was getting really close to finishing radiation slash after I had finished radiation, um, that's when I actually started, you know, thinking that this would be a real thing that we would do, even though I pretty much knew before that, but like I didn't think too in depth into it. I was ready to get married basically a little bit after our two year anniversary. So was he. Same thing. Yeah, around two <laughs> years I've been thinking, okay, what's the deal? What's gonna happen? And am I ready for that? And I'm like, yeah, I think I am. And our anniversary is our November anniversary 18th. Is November 18th. 2007. Seven. Yes. Yes, yes, it's 17. <laughs> See? For our two year anniversary, by the way, I got Gray a great book. Oh, yeah. Ooh, too bad we don't have Well, I wasn't going to show it anyway. Yeah, you I, I got a it's little a journal. journal where I wrote on each page of it, I wrote like a, one of the reasons why I love him and explained it. And then after I ran out of things of why I loved him, I put in pictures. You <laughs> ran out of reasons why you loved me. <laughs> After she <laughs> ran out of love, <laughs> she just I put just, in some pictures I to just, fill the void. Just, it was a book that she hand wrote in, in a journal. Right. Reasons that she loved me and with then, long explanations and lots of pictures. It was great. Yeah, lots of pictures. That is what happened. Yeah. So, a little after that, I told my parents that I was going to ask Samantha to marry me. I then started talking to a friend of ours who makes jewelry in Comfort, Texas. Around spring break in March, COVID hit. Everything started to get locked down. I could take Samantha to the hospital for her various appointments and checkups, but I couldn't go in. So I would spend the time in the parking lot talking to my jeweler friend. Since I spent a lot of time with Samantha, it was a great opportunity to talk to him without you there. Thanks, COVID. Yeah. But it also meant that the diamond supplier was completely shut down, weren't even taking calls. And the metal. Yeah. My first plan was to propose to her on a cruise that her family was going to take to Alaska that I was going to be a part May. of. In May. In May. That wasn't going to work for a couple reasons. One, I thought I'd have to find just the right time. I knew she didn't want it to be around a lot of other people. And I thought she'd probably want it to be the people that she'd go to afterward to be her family. So I knew it couldn't be Alaska unless we got just the right situation. That ended up being a moot point for two reasons. The ring wasn't done yet and the cruise got canceled because of the virus. Yeah. We still went to the beach with my family <laughs> in May. Yeah. But I didn't don't want to do it in the beach because the ring wasn't ready. And because we were just around my family, her family was a couple hundred miles away. The ring wasn't actually ready until around the 4th of July, and we weren't even here because we were at a family, one of his family's houses in Wisconsin. <laughs> so we were in Wisconsin. Yeah. The ring. The ring came, came while we were in Wisconsin. We're oh, right before we left for Wisconsin, you were like, I need to, I need to stay at my house yeah. for as long as possible because my parents are expecting a package that I need to sign for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I didn't even, didn't even put that together at all. No, um, she didn't. No. But she did put together the next thing that happened. But the, the, he didn't actually get the package, so he was like nervous about it because he thought that it would be delivered and no one would be there to sign for it and then the ring would get sent back and then he wouldn't get to propose to me on my birthday after the trip. So, but I did. Yeah. It worked out. I got back 
we did manage to have someone there to sign for the package. I got the ring. It was beautiful. It was amazing. I eventually paid for it. Um, Ooh, it's sparkle. Yeah, but it's not even close to in focus. It's not in focus, but... I don't think it focuses that close, really. It, oh, yeah, oh it, 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 it... Ooh. 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 Okay, hold on. You got it. I got the ring. It was great. Still is. Yeah. And... I agree. So this is where she started to figure out what was going on. I'd done a lot of swimming and a lot of stuff in on our trip to Wisconsin. And I came back and I had a bunch of earwax plugged oh. up in my ear for some reason, uh, which is actually important to the story. Yeah. I couldn't get it out. I couldn't I put the drops in, it softened it. I used a little bulb with water and stuff. I could not get all this earwax out of my ear. So I'm like, okay, it's annoying. It's not the end of the world. I'm gonna go to urgent care. I'm gonna have them flush out my ear. And I did, I go to urgent care and they flush out my ear and it's pretty easy. Um, yeah. And that's really the story of how we got engaged. <laughs> So while I'm at urgent care, they take my blood pressure and my pulse, just like they do to anyone who comes in there for any reason. And they tell me, hey, your blood pressure is kind of high. Are you nervous? And I said, no, I'm not, because I wasn't nervous about my ear full of wax. I was nervous about the fact that the next day I was going to be talking to Samantha's dad about if I could marry her. And I don't know if this is in focus. Is in focus? Got him. He was like, my blood pressure is high. I guess I'm stressed. And I was like, why are you stressed? And he was like, I don't know. Maybe it's this thing or this thing. And he started like randomly listing off things that he had to do that he wouldn't be stressed about. And I was like, who knows that they're stressed but doesn't know why they're stressed? Yeah. Nobody knows. Nobody does that. I talked to her dad and mm -hmm. her mom. Everything went smoothly. I started to get a little bit suspicious because we started planning my birthday and I wanted to go hiking and we also wanted to go out for dinner um, to a nice restaurant but we didn't want to do those two things on the same day because I was we were gonna go hiking after I finished working so we were gonna have the hike on my birthday and then the next day we were gonna go out to a fancy dinner then I looked at the weather forecast and I was like oh it looks like it's going to rain um, on my birthday, maybe we should switch the days around and we should have the fancy dinner on my birthday And then we should go hiking the next day and Gray was like No We should try to go hiking on your birthday I didn't want to do that because <laughs> I wanted to have a fancy dinner after we were engaged right. So we could celebrate her birthday and the engagement at a nice meal I wasn't gonna propose to her at the restaurant because I knew she didn't want me to propose to her in a restaurant yeah. I didn't really want to propose in a restaurant either So we really wanted it to be the hike first and or he did, but because right. I didn't know. She didn't know. I wanted to be the Though, hype first. that is kind of when I started getting a little suspicious because mm -hmm. I was, when I really got suspicious after the blood pressure thing. Um, yeah, I was like, okay, that's weird that he has such a strong opinion about that. We kind of together chose an easy hike because we got on a little harder one before and it was took you a long time to get up there. Yeah, and I got frustrated because mm -hmm. I used to be able to do harder hikes and then cancer happened and now I can't do as hard hikes. Um, so we picked a really easy hike. Because I didn't want you to be frustrated when I was going to propose. Yeah. And you bought it because you didn't want to be frustrated on your birthday. Yeah. So we picked one that's a super easy hike, about 15 minutes up to a beautiful view of the sunset. Nice little private spot that we can watch the sunset that we always watch it from. Mm -hmm. We should put it in the photo. Actually. Yeah, this photo that yeah. you gave it's me It's on Christmas. the wall, but right there. But we'll, I love that we'll, photo. We'll put it in here if you can find it. We start on the hike. <laughs> And I am having to stop every yeah, couple of minutes. I am usually the one that slows us down now. I am dead. I am breathing and incredibly hard. And I was just going hard. straight up. And I was like, what is going on? Why can't he like go up the mountain? And I was like, ah, because he's nervous. <laughs> the other thing that happened was right before the hike, he kept asking me, do you think there's going to be a lot of people? And I was like, it's a pretty popular sunset hike and we're going at sunset. So it's there's probably going to be a lot of people. It's never been that crowded though. Yeah, but we had gone at like we're in like cold times of the year yeah. and, and this time was like the middle of summer, like peak time when people are going to be hiking and stuff. So we got to our normal spot <clears throat> and we sat down. There were already about two people there. Another guy came and they were all talking to each other. And, and he kept getting more frustrated as more people showed I, up. I was really agitated at, that there were all these people, but I was trying not to get frustrated because I didn't want to ruin the moment. So I asked her, can we go somewhere else so I can give you your birthday present? Because I said, thought maybe she'd buy it that I just wanted to give her a birthday present in private. And I was like, 
why can't you just give it to me here? And you, you were like, nope, I'm not doing that. So then a few minutes later I asked, can we go somewhere else? And yeah. And I was like, I don't know, I don't want to lose the sunset spot because at this point I was like, like 99% sure, but I just wanted to like see how much resistance I got so I could be 100% sure because so, I don't like surprises. She was messing with me, so she's now said, no, I don't want to go to a different spot. No, I wasn't messing with you, I just wanted to know. I wanted to know what was going on, and I wanted to be sure. Right, but I didn't know what to do, because I'm like, can we go to another spot, because I needed to go to a private spot, and you said you didn't want to go to another spot. <laughs> Yeah, and then and he was so like... And so then a few minutes later, I'm like, let's go to a different spot. Yeah, I was like, okay, fine, we can go to another spot. So we did. We picked up and we moved just a slightly further down the ridge. There's kind of rocks on one side, and then there's trees coming up on the other side, and then you can see, like, the pretty sky, and you can still, like... Yeah, it's it was actually a really romantic private spot, mm -hmm. because no one wanted to be that far down into the trees, because you couldn't see the mountains as well. But it was, like, super private, it was super surrounded by nature, and it was, like, really pretty. It was a really nice spot. So I give her her birthday present, which is a letter, this letter, which is me explaining to her the reasons that I love her, because that's what she'd given me it for our so two year anniversary. Sweet. And I read it to her, and then I got down on one, one knee and asked her. Yeah. And she said yes. I did. We sat there, we read the note some more, we talked to each other in the private, you know, just for chilling. And then we were like, well, the sun's gonna go down, so let's go back to our sunset spot. So then we sat and we watched the sunset for like the next 30 minutes and my mom was getting anxious because she knew that he was gonna propose at sunset, but the sun sets faster when you're not on a mountain. So she was seeing the sun like be completely down and she was like, how come no one has called me yet and told me that this has happened? And then finally I texted her a picture. We took pictures up there. Yeah. Um, we didn't take any pictures around the area where we proposed. We didn't have like a random person taking photos of it or anything because I feel like that's just weird. Mm -hmm. I know lots of people like that, um, but I I don't like it to be fake private. I like to be truly private. <laughs> um, so basically, it was the most perfect proposal that I could have imagined. Uh, it was in. Mm. Blue Ridge Mountains, really pretty spot, and yeah. Yeah, yeah and then so we, then we, then we hiked back down in yeah. the dark. And we got in my car and called some people, and we wanted to tell Samantha's nieces that night that yeah. they were going to be the flower girls. The older niece has been asking us for a long time why we're not married, and she notices that Greg keeps his video games at my apartment because my Wi-Fi is good here and he likes to spend time here and play video games. And so she's been asking us for a Are long time. Are they married? No. Then why does he keep his Nintendo there? <laughs> they were asleep though, so we couldn't tell them that night because um, it was like 9.30 mm -hmm. by the time we were off the mountain and then it was like 10 by the time we got back. So we just went to my house, my parents' house, uh, talked to my parents and my brother because my brother didn't know yet, my little brother. And yeah. We called Jack, we called your mm -hmm. parents, told them that it happened. And the next day, we went to the dollar store. We got fun little buckets and decorated them and wrote my niece's names on them and wrote Flower Girl and got some fake flower petals. And then we went and told them that we were gonna take them on a walk. And when they came over, we showed them that and we explained it to them. And they were very excited to be Flower Girls. One of my nieces was like, oh, we were just playing Flower Girl yesterday. So they're very experienced. They know how to be Flower Girls. And then we had them tell my sister. That day, we went around telling all our family and friends. Uh, we called some people and we visited the people that we could visit safely. Mm -hmm. The ring fit perfectly on my finger. And I was like, how? How is it fitting perfectly on my finger right now? Here's how. My great grandmother passed away last year and she was very old. She was 102. So, I mean, she lived a really long life. After she died, <laughs> I remember you, your grandmother, your mom, and your sister were going through some of her old jewelry to see if it fit anybody, if anybody wanted it. Mm -hmm. And you didn't really want anything, you don't like a lot of jewelry, but your mom insisted that you try on a couple of rings. And you did, and you tried on a couple of these channel rings, like this, let's see if I can focus. Some of these rings, 
And I remember you saying, We'll be back soon after this blur. Yes. <laughs> okay. And I remember my ears perked up a little when you're like, oh, that actually fits really well. And so she had two of these identical rings that fit her pretty much perfectly. Once I was sure that I wanted to ask Samantha to marry me, I snuck into her jewelry box and I took out- Which I barely ever open because I don't wear jewelry. So I knew she wouldn't be missing it. I took out uh, one of the rings and I went around town to three different jewelry stores and had them all tell me the size, which is probably overkill, but they did. And <laughs> you they wanted all, to be positive. They all told me the size and then I put it back and started talking to the jeweler. I said, okay, here's the size. Mm -hmm. Then- Later, like- Later, I brought it up again. Yeah. Very slyly. It was very like, cool. it was after he had been doing work on the ring, mm -hmm. right? So it was close to. Right. He hadn't actually made it yet, but we kind of decided the design. And she said, Oh, it's a oh, little, it's a bit, little too bit too big. And I thought, darn it. Okay, let's go down a quarter size. So I took it down a quarter size and uh, went with that. And, and now it's a perfect like, size. The only problem- It's perfectly. Yeah, the only problem is that I, since I got lymph nodes removed from this arm because of, you know, cancer, uh, my arm swells up sometimes. And when my arm swells up, my entire hand swells up. And it tends to do this um, when we, whenever we travel. So mm -hmm. after we got back from Montana, I was not wearing the ring for a little bit because my entire like hand and fingers were like all swollen up. But now it's back to normal. <laughs> Everybody's hands and arms swell, but when you don't have lymph nodes, it takes a lot longer for the for swelling to go, to go away. Down. Yeah. yeah, so it was like that for a while. Yeah. It can always be resized, but that's the story of how I got. The perfect, the, the perfect size. size. Yeah, I was very surprised about that. And I actually, I kind of had an idea that you might be doing that. And so every once in a while, I would like open my jewelry box and see if this ring was still in there. But, but I obviously didn't. By the time you were doing that, you I, had, already I done had done it a long time ago. So we're engaged. Sorry we didn't tell you earlier, but now you know, and now you know why. So thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe, leave a comment like the video, turn on the little bell. We're gonna be doing more like engaged and uh, wedding planning videos and stuff. So if you like videos like that, then you should make sure you subscribe so you can watch them when they happen. Yeah, that's all, bye. We're engaged and here's why. Taxes. We wanna have sex. I'm not a uh, citizen. <laughs> Reasons to get married, <laughs> sex, taxes, green cards. All of which are the reasons we're getting married. Yeah, what else? Other reasons to get married. Um... Sex, taxes, green cards. Oh, you health can... insurance. Yeah, you can get on my health insurance. I get on her health insurance. <laughs> if, if you guys want to do something fun with your significant other during quarantine, there's something that we've discovered is hilarious. Fill your mouth yeah, with try, air. Yeah, try to make it so he can't push it in. That, the more you resist, the funnier the sound gets. Yeah. And they just try to squeeze it out. <laughs> you can't do it with a straight face. <laughs> You're doing... <laughs> you also can't resist. No one's like, cheeks are strong enough yeah, to not. Yeah, no one... You're Without not... just like swallowing it. <laughs>